This is the Find X2 Pro. This is Oppo's latest and greatest flagship, and over the past couple of months, it's gotten some software updates that may have improved some of its core features. And yes, it comes in orange. So let's take a look at the pros and the cons and whether you should pick one up for yourself. All right, so let's talk about the features and what I love about this phone. The first thing that obviously stands out is this orange leather back. In a world full of glass smartphones, it's really refreshing to have something different and this actually makes the phone so much more unique and more premium in my opinion. It provides really good grip when holding the phone and you won't see a ton of fingerprints, which is super nice to have. Now up front is a 6.7 inch AMOLED 1440p display with 120 hertz refresh rate that just looks incredible to look at. There is a hole punch display on the upper left hand side, which is a lot better than having a notch in the middle, but that's just me though. The 120 hertz refresh rate on this phone is somewhat similar to OnePlus 8 Pro and Samsung's S20 Ultra. The display itself looks really premium and colors are really accurate. Now, one thing I'm a fan of on the display front is the ability to fine tune your display settings. So you can go for a cooler or warmer looking screen, but you also have different display modes and the ability to switch between 120 Hertz or 60 Hertz, as well as change the resolution to save battery life. Now there's also a natural tone display setting, which basically just uses the ambient sensor on this phone to read the color temperature around you and that will adjust the color temperature of your screen to match the surrounding area. It's kind of like True Tone for iPhone. Now, like most flagships in 2020, the Find X2 Pro is using the Snapdragon 865 processor with the Adreno 650 GPU. So this is a 5G capable device. Now it's also equipped with 12 gigs of RAM. So this phone is super speedy and paired with that 120 Hertz refresh rate. It's one of the zippiest phones that I've ever used. The battery is also really solid on this phone. With 1440p and 120Hz refresh rate, I was able to use the phone for about 6-7 to seven hours. I used it to play games, go on social, answer a few calls and emails, and it held up just fine. Now, the Find X2 Pro also features a 65 watt charger, which can recharge your device from 0 to 100% in a little over 30 minutes, which is incredible. And just recently, actually, Oppo just announced a 120 watt charger that can fully charge your phone in just 20 minutes. Now, unfortunately, this phone won't be able to take advantage of that, but I really like how Oppo is changing the game when it comes to charging your device. Now, one unusual thing that I don't really like to talk about is the haptic feedback on smartphones. The haptic feedback is pretty good on this phone. This isn't really something that I usually cover, but haptics, in my opinion, is a great way to figure out whether this phone really is a flagship or if it's just, you know, like a cheap flagship or mid-range device, which in this case, this is a true flagship and the haptic feedback just brings everything together, which makes using the phone a lot better. Now I thought I was gonna hate Color OS 7.1 because of Oppo phones that I've used in the past, but it's actually really good. Out of the box, there were some bloatware, but nothing too crazy. It still does offer a little bit of customization, which is cool, but I wish it was more stock-like and more customizable like Oxygen OS on a OnePlus device, but I will give them props for giving us three options for the navigation bar. You can go the Color OS route with its swipe up gestures, the regular Android 3 button layout, or the new Android 10 navigation gestures, which I'm personally a fan of. Last but not least, my favorite thing about this phone are the cameras. There's three in the back, which I think is the perfect amount. There's a 48 megapixel main camera with an f1.7 aperture, a 48 megapixel ultra wide camera with an f2.2 aperture that also doubles as a macro lens, and a 13 megapixel periscope lens with an f3.0 aperture, which is a five times optical zoom with OIS that can also zoom in all the way to 10x. Now, the one thing I love about the camera is how accurate and neutral the cameras are. Photo quality is like a hybrid between iPhone 11, Pixel 4, and Galaxy S20. In broad daylight, you can really get amazing photos out of this phone. Now, colors aren't super saturated. The shadows aren't too crush. It's not too contrasty. However, it is slightly over sharpened, hence why I think it's like a hybrid of all three phones. And honestly, once you throw these photos in Lightroom or your favorite editing app, you can get really amazing looking images out of this phone. In low light scenarios, images are good, but not great, and the experience isn't as snappy as the ones on the S20, Pixel 4, or OnePlus 8 Pro. I think it still needs a little bit more work, but it's good enough. Now the front facing camera is a 32 megapixel shooter and it's actually not bad. I do wish it had an ultra wide angle lens, but the crazy AI beautification mode can be a bit trippy sometimes and offer a ton of options to really get the perfect selfie. Obviously it ain't for me, but if you're into face tuning, then this is the perfect phone for you.
All right, so we've got the pros out of the way. Here are some of the things that I didn't love about the phone. The first would have to be the lack of wireless charging. Yes, I know I sound like a broken record saying this, but it is 2020. Wireless charging should be standard in any phone, even if it's as slow as the iPhones, at least included. Now, the second thing I'm personally not a fan of is the curved display. It's a little too curved for my liking. It's not like the S20 Ultra where it's only a subtle curve. This is pretty noticeable, and I don't know. I feel like this phone would be 10 times better if it had a flat display. The other thing that I'm not a fan of are the speakers. The speakers on the Find X2 Pro are mediocre at best. It does get loud, but lacks bass and clarity in my opinion. The iPhone 11 Pro and the S20 Ultra or the OnePlus 8 Pro sounds way better than the speakers inside the Find X2 Pro. But here's the thing, it's not the worst speakers that I've listened to, but I'm pretty sure the Realme X50 Pro that I just checked out recently sounds a lot better and that phone is a lot cheaper. And speaking of cheaper, well, this isn't really that cheap. So as of right now, the Find X2 Pro retails for around $1,200 to $1,700, depending on which configuration you go with. And sometimes it's a little bit more than what I just mentioned due to import fees or third-party sellers just hiking the price up. This one in particular is the highest end model with 12 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. So it's pretty expensive. Now, I personally wouldn't pay over $1,200 for this phone given the lack of wireless charging capabilities and decent sounding speakers, but if you're a fan of Oppo and its design and the way they innovate, you can't go wrong with the Find X2 Pro. The updates over the months gave this phone so much more features and made the camera a lot better, so if money isn't an issue and you're looking for something different, a phone that looks super unique, I would personally pick this up. Now let me know in the comments down below whether you want to see how this stacks up against the OnePlus 8 Pro or the S20 Ultra, or if you want me to check out another phone. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and yeah, I'll see you all in the next one.